the Army Chemical Center at Edgewood, Maryland. Here are employed hundreds of qualified scientists, men and women, in and out of uniform, with many more that number of technicians and skilled workers. From many points of view, Edgewood is the heartbeat of the American chemical warfare effort. In well-equipped scientific laboratories, highly competent scientists and engineers explore many important lines of inquiry. Their primary purpose, to cope successfully with chemical warfare. And coping with chemical warfare means coping with chemical agents, substances employed in chemical warfare for tactical purposes, as well as the munitions which can disseminate them. Pilot plants are designed prior to large-scale production of both the agent and the munition. Hand in hand with development on chemical agents goes the never-ending job of working up detection and protection devices which indicate the presence of gas in the atmosphere by sounding a warning loud and clear. Telling a man agents are in the air is one thing, but he must continue to go on with his work. The Chemical Corps has designed a new lightweight canisterless mask, just one of many developments in individual protection. Many different types of protectors have been developed. I saw just a few of these special masks, one for military personnel, one for non-combatants, an infant protector, one for hospital cases, and many others. At Edgewood that day, I began to gain a sense of how the Chemical Corps does not ignore any possibility in the defense against potential CBR attack. In one laboratory, I watched a demonstration of clothes treated to protect the skin against the vapors and spray droplets of blister gases. The contrasts between clothing which had not been specially impregnated and the chemically treated clothing was strikingly apparent. Drops that had soaked into the cloth before just rolled off like water from a duck's back. Perhaps one overriding truism best describes the work at Edgewood. To defend against CBR warfare, one must know all about CBR warfare. How, for example, the vital functions of the body can be affected. In clinical and physiological laboratories, doctors investigate the effects of chemical warfare agents on the human body and develop medical treatment to counteract these effects. Yes, to defend against, one must know, and the roads to knowledge are varied. In one laboratory, I saw a striking experiment of the effects of a certain harmless chemical compound. A cat's reaction to the presence of a mouse was just about what you'd expect at first, a typical hunter's instinct. A harmless chemical agent was introduced. The cat's behavior became temporarily frightening, defensive, contrary to his normal behavior. Although the primary purpose of the research at Edgewood is successfully coping with chemical warfare, peacetime benefits have also come out of the work. Searching for new chemical agents, intensive studies must be made on how these chemicals affect the human body. Just as an example, one of the body effects of the nitrogen mustard war gases is a reduction of the white blood cells. Why not then use these gases for treatment of cancers where there is an abnormal increase in white blood cells?
This line of inquiry may prove of value in the treatment of leukemias and certain cancerous growths. Another example out of many, studies of nerve gas effects have also led to a more effective form of artificial respiration. In all, more than 300 widely varying contributions of benefits to people everywhere have been made as a result of chemical core research, much of it at the Army Chemical Center.